Hi guys and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the next version, the future of the web and where it's going with Web3. You can't afford to miss this video if you're a developer. It's the way things have been going and it's moved entire nations and in fact entire countries onto new platforms and into new grounds. So this is going to be an interesting one and guess what? You can hit that like, you can hit that subscribe, and you can hit that ding dong bell because guess what? We're going to tuck into this video and really start to learn about the next version of the web. So first of all, what the heck is Web3? What is it? Well, to do this, we must first understand what Web1 and Web2 came prior to that. Well, first of all, Web 1 was in your very, very old days, you know, when Windows 3.1 came out. And you would open up a browser and all you'd really be served with is text. And you could style. There was a, the first website that was ever really styled with CSS was Zen Garden. And it did a really good job of it. And uh, that was really the era of Web 1. Web 1 was all about sharing and communication. However, it wasn't dynamic. It was flat. It was simplistic. It didn't really have the interfaces we have today and so forth. This is where Web 2 comes in. Web 2 is where you basically have the platforms that we have today like YouTube and you have SPA technology and you've got Facebook and Twitter. Not only can we communicate our ideas, we don't all need websites anymore. We need platforms and those platforms allow us to take our voice already into a growing market space and then share our voice upon that market space. That's really what Web2 is all about. It's about delivering a greater experience. Now we've got newer technologies that let us do more complex graphics like WebGL and we've got even better technology coming down the line and we've got dynamic things, JavaScript running in the page and single page applications that let us build real complex applications that these platforms rely on to function. We couldn't do that, obviously, when the heydays of the web started out, but now that we've gone to these platforms, they need this technology to grow their platforms, and that's exactly what they've done. So think about Web1 as just communicating data. Whatever they want to communicate, they had to put that in data form and deliver it to you. Now, with Web2, you've got platforms that can deliver it, and with Web2, you get more technology, and if you want to make your own platform, you're more than happy to do so, and you have all the tooling available to build these very, very scalable platforms. But think of that as like a shift. We went from, you need your own website, you need your own blah, 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 to you don't need your own website, you can use these platforms like YouTube or Twitter or Facebook. Now we need to discover what is Web3. Well, Web3 is an exciting new development, and as I said, this technology has already shifted nations. So you may have heard of something called the blockchain. And I'm assuming that you probably already know this, but to anybody who doesn't, the blockchain you can think of as a database. But not just like any other database that's stored and hosted on, let's say, Facebook servers or a company's specific servers. This time, what actually happens is the content that you have is shared across multiple democracies. There's many, many, many people, and no one person controls the database. It's a fully democracy-based database. Now, it is a database. The blockchain most people think of as cryptocurrency. Well, that's changed nations. It's changed how nations work. It's how people have changed all over the world to these interfaces, escaping certain systems or governments and, and subverting and going around them where those governments want to block them or those governments are doing something illegitimate or illegal to prevent their citizens. Don't just think of the blockchain as a currency. It's not just a currency, it's a value in and of itself. It's a database technology. And that database technology allows for number one, anonymity of data. It doesn't have to be anonymous, but it allows for anonymity. That then gets rid of all these governments that want to try and stop payments or try to subvert people, such as the Venezuelan government, for example. That's a big conflict right now. The government is doing some terrible things, but the people can potentially subvert that government with 
their own type of cryptocurrency or working with the blockchain. And yes, that does allow for some illegal activity, but so does pretty much every other currency that you have in your pocket could be used for illegal activity. No reason to ban that one though. Now, I want you to change your mind from, because this is what Web3 is, that it's a cryptocurrency. The blockchain is cryptocurrency. The blockchain allows for cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is really an application, an exchange for tokens. These tokens have values placed upon them based on the market share, the market use, the trading and selling of these tokens. But I want you to think of the blockchain as the database. So just like you have a front end for a website and a back end with a database, well, the blockchain is a database. It's just a database that no one controls 100%. Therefore, that shared responsibility means that if any one government wanted to come after you, if any one thing wanted to come after you, they can't do that. Now, we've all noticed the Snowden scandals, right? With the Snowden scandals, what it was was they go to these companies who've encrypted your data and blah, 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 and stored it on their server, and the government says, hand over the data, otherwise we will... Uh, take you to court, we'll take you to a FISA court, we'll do whatever. Now, I'm not bothered about the intrinsic process, but that puts your data at risk, especially if that government turns into a totalitarian or whatever it is. I'm not really getting into that side of things, but this technology actually prevents that from happening. What that means is this chain of ledgers and this chain of democracies ensures that no government can actually subvert this database technology. No one company holds this database technology and the chain itself is actually, it's fully encrypted, but it's fully visible. So you would normally install a database technology on your server and that would be hidden behind firewalls and all the rest of it. This database is open to everybody. You can create data on it, you can store data on it, you can do all kinds of crazy things with these blockchains, sometimes a little bit too excessive, but it's not just about cryptocurrency. The blockchain is a database. Think of it like a MySQL that cannot be bridled or controlled or a Postgres or whatever database technology you have. It's a new type of database. It's a database that no one government, no one body, and no one thing can specifically control. However, everybody and every entity can interact with the blockchain, including the stock market. You've seen on the stock market, we're buying and selling on the blockchain. This database technology is available worldwide and you can store user information on it, you can store anything. Now this is where Web3 comes in, because Web3 is taking the essence of that technology and actually just bringing the blockchain closer. So when I want to create applications, I can actually store the application data not on my own infrastructure, not on a database that could be accessed by the government, or I could be forced to hand over information. I can store it on the blockchain. And that is what this is. It's opening up the blockchain technology to standard web applications or mobile applications or desktop applications. So this is where we get dApps from. That stands for decentralized apps. Decentralized apps are basically applications that will use the blockchain to store its information. Now there are a lot of companies and a lot of developers who have no idea about cryptography. It's very complex. So we have a middleman. The middleman will be a up and coming technology company like Morales. There will be others, but Morales really takes my eye right now. Beautiful interface, beautiful API. You can run simple events. You can get real time data from the blockchain. But what's really great about this blockchain, it can load and scale just naturally. It does it naturally out the box. The blockchain will not fall down because you're putting a lot of data on it. Now also what's really great about this blockchain technology, and you're gonna love it, is that again, it gives that security, that scalability to application developers. So decentralized apps will not have a central server with that database. Now we're still communicating with a server, don't get me wrong. Morales, for example, we will communicate with it, we'd send the data, and then it would take care of the complicated bit of inserting it into 
the blockchain. That's really what they're doing. And there's going to be more platforms out there that do this type of thing. So just think of it like replacing MySQL with the blockchain. You're changing it for a completely different database. That's really what Web3 is all about. That is again all live and real time just like the blockchain with the stock market it's all event driven and so you can build real time applications with this as well even using blockchain technology and what's even better about this is that more and more chains will become available there's not just one database type out there there's one for ethereum there's another for bitcoin there's another for da 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 and these chains all have their databases exposed and depending on what they allow in their chain they will let you store data, let you store information. It really is incredibly impressive. And it allows for decentralizing of application data. It allows for companies to no longer be threatened by potential governments that potentially want to get hold of the data or the application information. Or from any other entity. For example, there's a real layer of security on this. So you can't just go in and have an attack vector, which is like, I want to break into a server farm of a very giant company and, and harvest the data. One of the more notable ones was from the uh, Mozilla Monitor. I recommend you sign up to it. They release data breaches. Now, would you think that Domino's Pizza is really a threat to your data? Well, you've got your credit card numbers on there because you buy the pizza. You've got your address on there. You've got your name on there. That's a lot of information that you don't want letting out. And that was 13 terabytes of data from Domino's Pizza. So the beauty about this is we're not really relying on specific companies. This databasing technology is intrinsically, naturally secure. There still could be faults with it, but it's more secure because it's already been set up by cryptographers and professionals. Plus, the middlemen that have to deal with it would normally have to be more professional, more understanding of cryptography and how it works to immediately interface with that database. That's not something you get out of the box with MySQL or Postgres. You know, that layer of encryption, because this is a database opened up to the public, it has to naturally and intrinsically, as soon as you touch it, have certain levels of security. This is another plus factor and you don't even need to worry about it. It's truly fantastic. And it allows you to build applications that are completely and can be anonymized. At the moment, they could say they anonymize it, but they're storing their, your data at a certain point. They can run behavioral algorithms or behavior algorithms that can detect your activity. So this is the great thing about the Web3 is that your applications can become completely decentralized. They can say they anonymize your data, but that may not be the case because they're taking your data and putting it in one central location. That central location can be compromised, as we know, through the Snowden documents by governments themselves. And there is, even though this isn't much of a threat to you guys in the West, it is a threat to people in Venezuela, for example, and other regimes that could become more dangerous or deadly over time. So what we're trying to say here is that just because it may not be important to us, it is important to other people. And the decentralizing of these applications, specifically communication applications that allow us to, for example, report suspicious activity, report uh, things that could get you in serious trouble or harm, and allow people to live and eat on this same technology by transferring currency using this database technology. So it's not just thinking about the blockchain as cryptocurrency they're not synonymized completely and this is what people need to decouple cryptocurrency uses the database technology known as blockchain to transfer its value its value is goes up and down and based on market value and people and all sorts of complicated things right but that is separate to this guy over here which is your blockchain technology your blockchain technology can work with cryptocurrency, it can work with decentralized applications that want to store information on the blockchain and also eliminate a lot of the other threats that come when you take data and you just put it all into one pot, you know, like one of those magicians where they're shoving that thing in, the, in there and they go, ta-da, it's all gone. If those companies disappeared overnight, your entire content could disappear overnight or your information could disappear overnight. But could that happen to the blockchain? No. If a company disappeared and if the application is truly decentralized, 
then you can still gain access to your data. You can still gain access to your information. Even if that company went completely under, let's say someone went after them, a government, another company, they sued them out of existence, your data will still remain on this incredible database technology known as the blockchain. And that is where Web3 exists. It's taking the mystical world of cryptography and making public databases with all this cryptography available to application developers. And we can build our web applications, our desktop applications and mobile applications using this exact technology, protecting you, the user, us, the developer, and even the company from itself. Because the level that this requires in terms of cryptography would mean that either they need to split the data and store the data for themselves and then put it on the blockchain, which what's the point in that? Or it's just gonna take the data, put it onto the blockchain. Now don't get me wrong, this does not mean that you're completely anonymized. If I ask you to sign up with your username, email and password, or I ask for some communication information, and I'm using the blockchain and I store that on the blockchain, I'm still storing that, but it's fully encrypted. However, I've stored that information. I've put that information onto the blockchain. It's safe. We know that this technology is good. There are certain endpoints that are weak. You know, we're not saying there's no security flaws here, but the actual technology that's running the database is very good and very secure and very reliable as well. And it's running on a whole democracy of computers and a whole democracy of infrastructure so that as you grow, sure, as you interface with it, the price will go up. I mean, it's not free to just have all this free communication and free, free data. You still have, will have to pay these chains, whether it be the Ethereum chain, the Bitcoin chain, you're using their database technology, you're using their network and they're selling you that network. Very clever of them, very, very clever. And this whole technology is amazing. It's absolutely wonderful. And we're gonna get more uh, chains, more database technologies that potentially run faster, maybe more uh, centered around data-driven development rather than cryptocurrencies. As I said, cryptocurrency is not the blockchain, so maybe we can have a blockchain that's a bit more specific to application development and so forth. So I really don't know. I mean, that could be the future and I definitely feel like this Web3 thing has got me extremely excited and interesting and it's definitely worth doing. Can you imagine now you don't need to go to your local bank. You have a decentralized application that can run decentralized currencies that can completely change the way we work with the financial system. The financial system that currently says that debt is credit and I'm not gonna go off on a tangent here, but we can have a true economic system that actually can only and just only serve the people. And by the people and for the people, blockchain technology is where Web3 is going and decentralized applications allow for more security to the user. Normally decentralized applications would be open source intrinsically, naturally, because that's really why you choose an application like that. And therefore it opens us up even more to greater database and technologies. All right guys, so if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, come and join me on this amazing journey and we'll take it together I'm building an academy. If you want to come, go to avalex.co.uk, join the mailing list. I'll let you know when we start building it and you're going to help me with ideas and information and what you want to see from a platform out there. Come and join us. And here's some more great videos that I think you'll definitely take some interest in.